Hey traders, everyone, welcome to you. Okay, so you're in a bear market and you see your favorite short selling stock, your short selling index that you like to short and it's at new lows. How do you quantify going short now? Because let's let's face it, when a market is has cracked, whether we're talking intraday, whether we're talking many days, you know, when a stock is completely getting hammered, it gets hammered day after day after day. And generally the price action just looks like a one-way street for a long time. And those pullbacks might even be exaggerated. You know exactly what I'm talking about when you see this. So it may not be an index, it may not be specifically a bear market, it could be just a stock that you want to short, or it could be an index as well. The point is, how do you quantify that risk when you're selling into new lows? Listen, the first thing you must do when you're short selling into new lows is be very, very aware of these vicious bear market rallies you get. You get real severe spikes. If it's an index, you're going to get three or four, you can get three or four days of massive gains before it curls back down again, just pushes to new lows. Because everyone's kind of waiting for the low, they pile in, it pushes up, selling's not done, it bombards it down to the downside yet again. So you've got to watch out for that. But the point is, Often these things will just go lower and lower and lower and lower and lower and you can get a lot of juice out of it just by hitting that short sell right on the low. But you need to quantify your risk. So you've got to accept the point you could get stopped out. We've gathered that. How do you quantify this? So let's assume you are literally selling into a new low. Obvious place for you is going to be above a prior day's high. You know, very simple place to do it, especially if you're day trading or above a weekly high or above some kind of thing, like a 20 day high is often used by people, uh, you know, something like that, some kind of fixed level. It might not be, I know a lot of you are looking for a lot on IOM as well. I like to look for a place where I can kind of really quantify my risk, let's say a bear flag. It's very nice, isn't it? You can easily say, oh, well, if it goes above that level, then the, the, the trade is negated. Or, you know, if you're trading a breakout, you can kind of trade it here. And if it goes back into the range, it's negated. There are often very many trades where, you know, you can very easily quantify the, the, the trade. You can say, well, if it goes in this area, I'm out of it. So, But you can't do that if you're selling into new lows. And it's the same, by the way, guys, if you're buying into new highs, it's just a little bit different when you're selling into new lows because buying into new highs tends to be very chuggy, very slow. Um, it might pull back a little bit, but you the difference with selling into lows is you get these vicious snapbacks. All right, so you've got 20 day high, kind of yesterday's high, if you're being ultra aggressive and you're day trading it, a couple of days high, whatever it may be. Another thing, of course, you can do is you can frame or you can kind of you know, frame is probably a good word, uh, the move from high to low. So you can either use a fib on that or you can split it up into, into fours. Maybe we'll use a different color pen for that. Let's use the blue. You can split it up into quarters, fourths, however you want to say it, wherever you're from in the, in the world. Uh, is that our fours? Yeah, it's close enough. So you can go, okay, one, two, three, four. And you can say, okay, well, I'm not gonna let it come back more than 25%. I'm not gonna let it come back more than 50, 50%. However you want to frame that. So the, the point is you're trying to structure it based purely on a numeric value. And that's the best you can do, especially if it's just a one way street. If it's kind of stalling and giving you little levels of support and resistance to play off, um, and it happens to kind of be doing this, more, this pattern, then of course, you know, have a little play about the highs, have you stopped above the highs, give it that classical strategy. But if it isn't, and if it is that grinding one way street, do that. Another thing you can do, this is getting a bit of a mesh, we wipe it off so we can see what we're doing. The other thing you can do with this guys is that's kind of structuring it just based on X number of highs, X number of uh, days or percentage retracement, whatever it may be. Another thing of course you can do is using a moving average. You can have a moving average, which is gonna follow the price down. And obviously the, the, the kind of longer, higher time frames are gonna be a little bit further away from the price. Choose the one that it hasn't touched. Just do it visually. There's no kind of secret source this one. Just do it visually and that's gonna be based on the angle of this trend. You can say, hey, it hasn't touched the 20 period for uh, since we started the move. So I'm gonna add maybe another five onto that. I'm gonna use a 25 period as my stop level. And I'm just gonna say, okay, that's where I'm gonna do it. Now you might have to give back a fair bit and you might end up having to sit through that horrible kind of retracement. And in an ideal world, you wanna be shorting it after that retracement fails. But if you have to sell it into lows and you think, hey, this thing's just not even gonna bounce, or it's got a long way to go before it bounces, and you're trying to structure it, there's some ideas. Split it up into kind of fib or quarters, 
do the 20 day high thing, do the prior days high, prior weeks high, use a moving average, add a little bit onto that moving average, just give that little bit of extra cushion and trade it down with that. All right guys, that's quantifying your risk with selling into new lows. Whatever you do, keep the risk manager. I'll see you in the next one. Take care, bye-bye.